Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be doing a compression test on a 7th generation Honda Civic. That's 2001 to 2005. This is the first of many videos where I go all the way through doing a complete head gasket replacement on this engine. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. There's a lot more videos to come, but I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it's helpful to you guys. Okay, so the first step here is use a flat blade screwdriver and you can turn these clips here and that Honda cover will pop off. Next you're going to want to unplug the ignition coils and you just push in the black tab that I'll show you here and then pull up straight up and the connector will pop off. Okay, then go ahead and uh, unplug the rest of them, get them out of the way. Then you can move over to the coils themselves. And I believe it's just a 10 millimeter socket here. You can just crack these loose and then pull and wiggle the coils upwards once you've removed all the nuts and they should pop right out. You can also use a drill if you want it to go faster. So these coils were already labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, it actually doesn't matter which hole they go in because they all do the same thing and plug in the same. And that takes a 5 8 spark plug socket. You can get them in a wobble, you can get really long ones, you can just get straight ones like this. Either type will be fine. Um, and a trick that I found has helped, especially when putting spark plugs in, you know, you tighten them up and then you go to pull it out and your extension pulls out and your socket is stuck in there because of the rubber um, in the socket here gets kind of stuck on the spark plug and you can't pull it out. So a trick for that is to use some electrical tape. Okay, then you can just put the socket, slide it down into the hole, push down and turn it to the left, and you'll kind of feel it lock into place over the um, spark plug. And when you do that, you can just break it loose and then spin it out by hand. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So looking at it from the top to the left, you always want to go for pretty much everything on this car. Let's do them all. It's a good idea to keep your spark plugs in order and to see which cylinders they came out of. So if you see a spark plug that looks really bad, you know there could be a problem in that cylinder. Next step is to remove the fuel pump fuse. So right underneath the steering wheel you'll see this plastic cover. There's two locking tabs here. Just turn them to the left, that one to the left too, the cover will come right out. And on the back of that is your fuse panel, which is upside down. <laughs> so right there, fuel pump number 17. So from the bottom it's one row up and then four fuses over from the right is the fuel pump. So just count over and it's a 15 amp fuse. You can pull it out with some pliers. Next you want to hold the throttle open all the way. So you can do it outside with a screwdriver or you could put something heavy on the pedal that keeps it open. You want it open all the way for maximum airflow. Okay now we're going to do a compression test. So this is what a basic compression tester looks like. It's got PSI on the inside. That's what we're going to be going off of because that's what most of the stats are in for cars compression. 
And on the back side here, uh, where the thread is, there's also different adapters. So you can put on different sizes for different size spark plugs. So for this one, we'll just use the uh, standard size here. Okay, then thread it in by hand till you get resistance and then just kind of twist the rubber a little more. Make sure it's kind of just hand tightened in there. And you can just set the gauge to the side. So what you're looking for is a cylinder or two that have quite a bit different compression than the others. So if all of them are at 150 and then you see one that's at 75, you know there's a problem there. So one way to crank the engine is to actually jump power to this pin right here on the starter. If you just jump power from the battery to that, it will crank the engine. So the minimum compression is 135 PSI with a maximum variation of 28 PSI. This means that the maximum difference from one cylinder to another shouldn't be more than 28 PSI. Okay, so now we have spark disabled with the coils out. We took out the fuel pump, so we're not gonna be pumping fuel in. So we are ready for this compression test. So you wanna crank about four or five times, meaning four or five needle flicks, so that every time you see that needle flick, it's coming up on the compression stroke, creating pressure. So take your reading, write down what it was. This was about uh, 155 or 160. Um, I did it a second time here just to see. So yeah, second time I might have given it a little more. So you can give it about four or five compression cranks to get a good reading. Okay, we can take that out. Simply just unthread it. And move on to the next cylinder. So all the cylinders were close for compression. They were all over 135. They were all at least 150. And they were within 28 PSI of each other. So as far as the compression test goes, things are okay. Things are good. So if you do have a bad one though, what you can do is a wet compression test. And what you do is you just put a little shot, just a squirt of oil. You don't want to put too much oil because if you do, you could hydro lock your engine, which would... Um, basically mean the pistons trying to compress oil and then things will bend you'll probably bend a connecting rod so just a squirt just a shot of oil and then you can do the compression test again and even in a good engine you'll see quite a difference um, it will jump up the, the pressure will jump up a lot and that shows that it's the piston rings so the oil is sealing around those rings and it's increasing pressure if you do the wet test and it's still doesn't increase, then it's probably leakage on the valve side. So yeah, see it jumped all the way up to 200, so that extra oil in there helped seal around the rings in there and increase the pressure. So in summary, if you have one cylinder that's not meeting the minimum compression and it's quite a bit lower than the others, you have a problem in that cylinder. Um, to find out if it's the rings, you add a shot of oil, and if that pressure jumps way up, then you know that those rings are worn because the oil is sealing around the rings. If you add the oil and you still don't get a jump in the pressure, then you likely have a burnt valve, and the pressure is escaping straight up through an exhaust valve, and you're not able to build the compression. So either way, 
um, you're going to need to do major engine repairs, do a teardown. There is one other test you can do, and it's called a cylinder leakage test. I have a video for that, and I could put a link for that for you guys. And that test will tell you where the leak is coming from. You'll be able to pressurize the cylinder when it's at top dead center and find the leak. Thanks for watching, guys. That's it for this video. I've got many more to come, so consider subscribing so you can join me in the next video. I'll see you there.